Welcome back to Invested, beautiful people. Um, taking another question, it's regarding CAM charges. And most people will know what a CAM is if they have retail assets, uh, common area maintenance. Uh, CAM charge is really part of usually triple net leases, mostly retail. Office has triple nets as well too, but we'll skip that for another thing. Check our other videos out. So it's a very long question, so I'm going to kind of summarize it. But the headline is, landlord and property manager hiking up CAM charges to double what they were two years ago. So this individual has is a fighting gym, so I'm not sure if it's a USC training gym in Utah. He started in around September 2021, was paying about $830 of common area maintenance per month. That's good. They divide it up to 12 months and that's what, you, what they do. And he goes, new trust fund baby owner from California brought, bought it in August of 2022. Hey man, that's kind of messed up, man. There's not everyone from California is a trust fund baby. Everyone work very hard over here as well too. I can see your frustration. So all said and done, it, essentially they doubled. So they're saying that essentially becomes like $1,600 a month. LL means landlord. PM means property manager. Want us to pay all of last year's CAM and the increase of the year CAM by the end of the year. This means by paying more than 10 k out of my own pocket when I had just gotten to the point where I was almost breaking even in my business. I, it's frustrating. I, I, I know. He, very sympathetic, empathetic towards all business owners because they're entrepreneurs and Look, man, you're running a gym. It, 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 I'm sure it's hard as hard as hell, man. There's nothing that's easy in this life. If you see fake success on YouTube and all that crap, it's all fake. I mean, they don't really talk about the journey, how hard it is. And I get it. And going from $800 a month, that's not even including your base rent. That's your cam. Doubling, that just eats into your bottom line of the business. So I feel for you. But let me go ahead and try to give you advice to you and also to you know the channel, you know the viewers are watching this. This is why lease is very important. I know like sometimes they do air forms, all the standard forms, and they give you a size. Like, hey, this is how much you pay, and you sign it. Hey, look, you're not a lawyer. You're not a real estate personnel. I, I get it. If a broker told you this is standard and you sign it, and you, you're just focused on running your business, it's imperative you know what is in the lease. I'm sure everyone has a real estate friend. Ask your friend to review those leases. Usually cam charges are not set. They give you an estimated cam charges. So let me break out this for you. Uh, and it also is going to be the caliber of the owners of the property. So now if you have, let's say, for instance, Heinz, the Lewis Group managing this retail center, their cams are going to be pretty tight and pretty high because they're institutional quality. So they know how to operate things, right? So the, the landscaping, you know, the irrigation, their signing, paving, all has been budgeted and they RFP, request for proposal, and they try to be tight as possible because most landlords don't want the camp charges to double. You know why? It becomes, the property becomes less competitive to other buildings out there. So what I'm thinking here is two factors why the camp has increased a lot from when you first occupied it. And you say someone bought it, so I'm using that assumption. Your prior landlord probably was a... Um, a mom and pop guy who just didn't spend the money. Maybe the landscaping was not very good and they didn't fix anything. So they didn't spend anything. So they were just charging you $830, right? I'm sure you took a gym there because not to think you're starting off. You probably went to where it was the cheapest possible for you to operate your gym so you can grow it. So I'm sure you were very cognitive of cost. So you're probably your broker. Hey, I want to be all in this much. So they were kind of finding, you know, properties that might be class B, C, you know, that has low expense ratio. So when this trust fund baby from California bought this, there's a couple of things that goes up. I'm not sure if your CAM, you're identifying CAM as your common area, but a lot of most individuals forget that uh, it's triple net. So usually your 830, I'm going to assume that is part of CAM, insurance and property taxes. I might be incorrect, but that's going to be an assumption, right? And most people call it CAM. But it's out of that $830, there's some portion that's going to be CAM. There's a certain portion that's property insurance for the building. And the third component is going to be property taxes. So when this trust fund baby bought this property, I don't know how much they bought it for. So property tax probably went up. So then that's, they have to pass that through, right? So naturally, if someone owned it and their cost base it was $2 million, and this trust fund baby comes and buys for $10 million off the bat, $8 million value inflation, and the property tax is going to go up accordingly, okay? So that's what they got passed out onto the tenant. Second, property insurance has been historically going up. 
So maybe the prior owner had a, I don't know, Geico and didn't really do have a good insurance policy. Maybe just cover the bare minimum with a high deduction. Maybe this person has a lender and the lender requires that they have a $2,000 deduction and to have business interruption insurance, GLs, uh, mechanical insurance, flood insurance, whatever it may be. So now the insurance cost has gone up and no one's going to argue that insurance cost overall has gone up around the country. So they have to pass that through to you as well. The third component is maybe the landscape is bad, the, the striping, the parking is bad. I mean, there's no signage. There's The paints are chipping off. So they're making more improvements to the building to the benefit of the tenant in the long run, right? And then protecting their asset. But as you know, a lot of these common area maintenance for the benefit of the building gets passed on to the tenants. So in my perspective, I think the cost has gone up quite a bit for you uh, because there's new ownership and the new ownership maybe is taking care of the asset better. Maybe not. I don't know. But that's an assumption, a uh, reasonable assumption that I can make. And another thing is you need to read your lease because a, a lot of savvy tenants will ask for something called a cap, like a cap of a ceiling on controllable expenses. Uh, most landlords are going to be will acquiesce to that request, but they will say, okay, we'll give you a 5% cap or 3% cap on controllable ex- expenses, which is common area maintenance, like the janitorial, landscaping, painting, blah, 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 blah. Uncontrollable is going to be the property tax and insurance. So that there's no cap on that. So it's it's going to be important for you to review your lease again, go back to your lease and look at those provisions on operating expenses. I don't know what section they might be and see if there is a cap on controllable. If that's the case, you have a good argument. In addition to that, you do have a right as a tenant to audit those CAM charges. And usually you can only audit once a year. You can't do, we can't do more frequently than that. So you will need to request that in writing to the property manager. So read your lease and see how you need to provide that notice and where to mail it to. So don't just send an email and say, I want to audit. Send an email to the, the property manager, attach the letter, and also certify mail it to where the, the, prior, the proper notice needs to be delivered to, to ensure your rights are protected. Then once you get that, they will need to furnish you all the information pertaining to those increases, what we call CAM reconciliation, and they only to give you a breakout of all those items, okay? And it, the cost for that audit, if they're correct, you will need to pay for that cost of the audit. Now, if they're wrong and the standard deviation is they're off by 5%, then the landlord has to cover the audit cost that you do, right? Because I'm pretty sure you're a jail operator. I don't know your background. I'm not sure if you're a counseling or a CPA, but you're probably going to have to hire auditors to audit their books because they're going to give you general ledgers this much, Excel sheets. I don't think you have the time to do that. So you're going to hire someone to do that. And if that information the landlord provided is correct, then you will need to pay for that auditor yourself. Now, if it's off by usually 5%, I, I can be wrong. Your lease is all different. 5%, then usually the landlord will pay for that. So you got to be very, very careful. Um, don't, let, don't let your emotion uh, get in the way of that. Just make sure that they provide you uh, concrete information to validate that increase. And if you see something's wrong with that, it, it smells fishy, then you can go in, into audit because that, ta- that process will take some time. I know that's long-winded. But I feel for all the business operators that you guys are hustling out there and I, I give you guys kudos for that. And um, yeah, landscape is not favorable. Keep doing what you're doing and If there's anything that we can assist you guys with on questions, always add comments. Follow us and add comments. We'll definitely get back to you. If you found this uh, content helpful, share, like, add comments, help our algorithm. Thank you very much. 